So the Ninth Circuit recently granted California's request for an emergency stay in the Miller assault weapon ban case in California. So let's talk about what this means and where this case goes from here. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think bans on so-called assault weapons is clearly unconstitutional, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also to mention that we have a podcast available. You can find it on all audio platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcast, really anywhere that you listen to podcasts. I would love your guys' support, so I will leave links down in the details section, also in the pinned comment. And if you head over there, make sure you follow those uh, podcasts on those platforms and leave a review because that helps to grow the podcast. But regardless, thank you guys so much for all of your support. So like I said in the intro, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals recently granted California's request for an emergency administrative stay in the Miller v. Bonta California assault weapon ban case. There is a lot more going on with this stay order than meets the eye. So I wanted to break down what this order said and then some potential silver linings that I think a lot of people are overlooking. Recently, Judge Benitez, or St. Benitez as he's known in California, struck down the California ban on so-called assault weapons. This was a huge win for California gun owners and essentially set the stage for the current battle that's going on in the Ninth Circuit. Judge Benitez, when he issued his decision, he also granted a 10-day stay on his own uh, decision, on the enforcement of that decision, and essentially that was set to terminate on October 29th. California appealed that decision to the Ninth Circuit and also requested an emergency stay from the Ninth Circuit, and they wanted that to be issued before that deadline period, which was October 29th. That request went to an emergency motions panel in the Ninth Circuit because of that deadline that was looming. Well, this weekend, the emergency motions panel granted the stay order that was requested by California, and they also used some interesting rationale, but there are also, in my opinion, some silver linings that came with this order. Now, for those not aware, Miller v. Bonta is a challenge to the state of California's ban on so-called assault weapons. Under California Penal Code Section 30515, the state of California bans various types of firearms based on their characteristics. For example, a semi-automatic centerfire rifle with a detachable magazine cannot have a flash hider, a collapsible stock, or a forward vertical grip. If it does, then it's defined as a so-called assault weapon in the state of California. The Miller case was originally heard in the Southern District of California before Judge Roger T. Benitez. In the original order of this case, Judge Benitez found that this case was an average case about average guns used in average ways for average purposes. In reaching his decision, Judge Benitez used a standard review that was also just affirmed and reaffirmed essentially by the Supreme Court. After his original decision, the state of California appealed that to the Ninth Circuit. The Ninth Circuit did grant the appeal, but then the Miller case sat on hold in the Ninth Circuit. The Miller case was put on hold because of a backlog of cases which were waiting on the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin case, essentially waiting for it to be issued by the Supreme Court. Once the Supreme Court issued their 6-3 opinion in Bruin, which upended all of the Ninth Circuit's prior Second Amendment precedent, the question became what the Ninth Circuit would do with existing cases in front of them. Ultimately, the Ninth Circuit decided to remand all of their Second Amendment cases back down to the district courts, uh, essentially send it back down to them for reconsideration in light of that Supreme Court Bruin decision. Miller went back to Judge Benitez, and also, once again, on review, Judge Benitez found that the essentially California assault weapon ban that they had in place through California Penal Code through Section 30515, he found that it was unconstitutional once again, and he issued an injunction permanently barring California from enforcing that law. However, he also put a 10-day stay on his decision, essentially giving California the opportunity to appeal if they wanted to. California did appeal, and they also sought an emergency motion for a stay pending appeal. In the Ninth Circuit, when there is a time-sensitive emergency request like this, it automatically goes to the motions panel, so that's why the motions panel was reviewing this specific issue. The motions panel is randomly selected and rotates every single month, so typically you can't tell who's on the motions panel. And this weekend, while I was out doing the Manzano Tactical Red Dot site training course, kind of in the middle of nowhere, um, you know, my phone got pinged and we got an order from the um, motions panel here. And I also just want to give a shout out to Manzano Tactical. If you guys want great training in California, I highly recommend them. And the order that was granted here was in favor of California. So the panel here granted California's request for a stay, and they also expedited review of the case, which means that oral arguments will happen in the Miller case before the end of this year. Now, for those curious, the three judges on this panel, on this motions panel, were Judges Fletcher, Callahan, and Bennett. 
Judge Fletcher was appointed by Clinton, Callahan by Bush, and then Bennett by Trump. Now, Fletcher and Bennett were the judges who granted the order, and Callahan, who really is just a rock star when it comes to these 2A cases, wrote a dissent where she essentially said she would have denied California today that she wanted to, but essentially she got outvoted. So here is what the order reads. In light of this court's published order granting a stay in Duncan, concluding that the Attorney General of California is likely to succeed on the merits and has shown that California will be irreparably harmed absent a stay, and the similarities between Duncan and this case, we grant appellant motion and administratively stay the district court's October 19th, 2023 permanent injunction and judgment. In granting an administrative stay, we do not intend to constrain the merits panel's consideration of the merits of this appeal in any way. The administrative stay shall remain in effect until the merits panel decides the appeal or issues an order lifting the stay. We sua sponte expedite this appeal. The opening brief is due on November 9th, 2023. The answering brief is due November 22nd, 2023. The optional reply brief is due November 29th, 2023. No streamlined extensions of time will be approved. The clerk will place this appeal on calendar for December, 2023. Now here's what Callahan said in her dissent. She stated that, I would deny plaintiff's motion for a stay pending appeal. I do not believe we are bound by the published order in Duncan v. Bonta, and I do not believe appellants have otherwise met their burden of showing a likelihood of success on the merits that they will suffer irreparable injury absent a stay. I concur in the order insofar as it expedites this appeal. So there are a few things I want to point out. One of the first things is the fact that this case Miller and the stay issued here in Miller was essentially because the Ninth Circuit en banc panel recently granted a stay in the Duncan Magazine Band case. We've talked about this in prior videos, but the en banc panel bent all of their rules to take the Duncan case as a comeback case and then issued a stay on the Benitez Magazine Band decision. When the Ninth Circuit did this, there were in fact judges on that same panel, on the en banc panel. You had judges like R. Nelson, Van Dyke, and Bumate that pointed out how the en banc panel was pretty much just breaking all of their rules. The backlash of that has also recently resulted in the en banc panel requesting briefs from all of the parties in that case, and they are even asking if they even had the authority to take that case on a comeback if it broke some federal laws. So there is currently briefing even going on in Duncan whether or not the panel there had the authority to issue the state. It's this corrupt and uncertain stay in the Duncan case that was then used as a basis to grant the stay in Miller. There were also questions after that Duncan order on whether CRPA would file that emergency review from the Supreme Court. However, it seems like they decided not to go down that route, which is understandable in some ways. However, the unfortunate thing is that because of that Duncan order currently sitting out there, that opened the door for this motions panel and Miller to just follow suit and just follow what the uh, Duncan en banc panel said. Maybe if there was an emergency petition out there to the Supreme Court, which was challenging that Duncan stay, maybe this panel here, Miller, would have maybe had to use a different rationale and just couldn't lean on Duncan. Now, the likelihood is that this motions panel still probably would have granted the stay, but at least they would have had to have worked harder and come up with a different rationale. Now, despite this order, there are still a couple of silver linings, in my opinion. First, the order expedited review in the Miller case. The panel set the brief to be submitted by November 29th and then also set the appeal to be heard at least by the end of December. In that same order, the court also said that they would not accept any requests for extensions of time. So that means that those dates are currently set in stone. So there will be oral arguments in December, at least in Miller. The other silver lining I see is that the order states in no way does the motions panel administrative stay prevent the merits panel from deciding the appeal how they want or issuing an order lifting the administrative stay if they want. To me, this is very interesting. The merits panel is the real panel that will hear arguments in this case in December. If we get a favorable three judge panel on that merits panel, there's also the option to go to that merits panel once it's selected, maybe even before December, and ask them to reconsider or potentially lift the administrative stay that was just granted by the emergency motions panel. Now, I will say the likelihood is that they would not grant that, um, but it is an option out there. And potentially, if you get favorable judges, maybe someone like Bumate, Van Dyke, R. Nelson, Callahan, or any of those other judges on the actual merits panel, that option is still out there. So definitely not ideal, but most of us suspected that the motions panel would grant the administrative stay in the favor of the state of California, and that's what they did. But the positive is that the panel 
has set the case to be argued in front of the three judge panel, the merits panel in December, and then we'll have to wait and essentially see what the order is. We will be watching this very closely to see how this plays out and also to see who's on the merits panel. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I will try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and you like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in the Cyber 2A news. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.